this is the save that I started yesterday. It made me start over, which I really didn't even mind because uh, I wanted to start over. Uh, we're down in my lab. This is like underground. Let's go up to the top. And this is one of my favorite updates. Do you hear that? There's weather now. Let's pop outside and listen to the rain. Listen to that. Now, how lovely is that? I love that they've added weather. It's so nice. So, um, for those of you who are not familiar with the lovely, beautiful, colorful world of Slime Rancher, we are the Beatrix Lobo, that super cute character you saw on the screen, the main menu screen. Um, sorry, my cats are fighting and I told them off, so hopefully they calm down, but let's be real, cats do what they want. At least they're somewhat quiet. So, um, Beatrix is armed with this handy dandy tool, the vac back, and the vac back grabs stuff from the nearby environment like this and then it spits it back out which is super fun of course I've got nothing in the fact back now so nothing to spit out and this gorgeous conservatory greenhouse thing is the home to my uh what are you doing <laughs> this guy escaped <laughs> he's supposed to sit in here with his fellow angler slimes and I'm pretty sure I had five. Now I've got to go track down the other one. Um, these are my little cat slimes and they're hungry and they're unhappy with me. These ones are little crystal guys. They're kind of loud so. Oh, you got into the, you got into the chickens. Very, very naughty. This is, these chickens are their favorite uh, food. So, yeah, okay, I'm gonna have to put, like, a, a, um, see this, like, a net on top of these pens, and that puts them in there. I think, yeah, I can afford it, so let's buy a air net, and you guys stay in there, naughty, naughty things. I was gonna feed you some, some yummy chickens. I'm growing carrots raising chickens and there's some heart beats over here which I don't even have the so all the slimes have a favorite food and the slime whose favorite food is the heartbeat I don't even have so I really need to plant something else in there um, let's feed the veggies to these guys they're hungry they they eat vegetables some are carnivores like them they eat meat. These guys eat meat, and these guys eat meat. Um, and a couple of them eat anything. This guy is a yolk slime, and it's brand new. Or at least it's new to me. I saw it by accident, or I just came across it, and I love it. It hangs out with the chickens, and occasionally makes, like, this giant egg that you get to pop, and there's, like, cool stuff inside. Okay, I didn't mean to pick up the roosters, which are called roostros. Um, I'll feed these seans to the naughty, naughty angler slimes. They look like little angler fish. And when they eat, they produce a plort, which looks like a little plum bob. And if you feed them their favorite food, they give you two plorts. Double the fun. I can take these blurs over here and sell them. They're worth 32 today, so let's go ahead and sell them. And that is super satisfying. I also have a, uh, it's over this way, another spot on my farm I just unlocked. And it's a mushroom cave down this little windy path. slimes. Here are my batty slimes. They're hungry. They eat fruit, so I'm growing their favorite fruit, the pomegranate. 
let's scoop up some of these uh, CNs. I don't like to have too many because uh, then they won't, you know, produce and also the yolk slime won't make a giant egg if there's too many. So of my carnivores who's worth more. The anglers probably. So let's give these to the angler slimes. You get a chicken and you get a chicken. You get a chicken. I'll just, you guys can all have chickens and then when you get hungry, you can Noises, and sometimes it's just like a resource, but it can also mean that there's 
much to explore around here. It's very, very cool. And because it's an exploration game, there's areas to unlock. And then you kind of teleport into this new area. So I have unlocked this area. Let's walk into the teleporter. And we load in a new spot. And this place is called spent a lot of yesterday exploring Ember Valley. This game has no fall damage, which is awesome. Makes it very kind of stress-free. The only things you have to worry about that are stressful are the tars, that thing you saw, and the feral slimes. I thought you're meowing. That's cute. I, I thought that I turned them both off. Let's see, there's supposed to be some ferals in here. See if there's if they're there or not. Yeah, the feral slimes. They're angry and they will bite you. Look how angry they look. You can kind of calm them down if you feed them, but then it's kind of temporary. And um, the tars are okay. So you see these big guys. When a slime eats a plort of another type of slime. It makes a Largo, or a Largo, I say Largo, ow, the bounce on my head, which is a combination of the two kinds. So this is a pink slime mixed with a tabby slime. And stop jumping on me. They're, okay, they're, they're interesting. I love the way they act. It's funny, I must stand up here and watch them. So the, when you combine the two, then the diet is made up of the two different kinds of slimes. So pink slimes eat anything. So now these can eat anything and when they produce plorts they make one of each. Now if this pink tabby larga they're all jumping up to try to say hi, hello. If they eat a plort that is neither pink nor tabby that creates a tar. And the tars are just these evil abominations that just like consume everything in its path and they'll hurt you the Beatrix 
last one I'll just oh it did make two okay that is cool it makes two of each ow these are you find these little things out in the world you can break them open for money and stuff like that it's really fun all right this will be ow <laughs> that will be ten perfect now I'm just looking for silky sand I think that might be a, no that's primordial oil these are resources that you can stop hitting me <laughs> resources that you can in the world and use them for crafting. I love this game. It's so fun. I've never met anyone that didn't like this game. Like, no matter what kind of game you're interested in, this kind of scratches so many itches. If you love a cute, cozy game like me, then you'll love it. If you love an exploration game where you want to explore all the nooks and crannies, like, look over here. See, there was something here and I already got it, but it's like very rewarding and exploration. If you want um, a simple, easy, stress-free game, you know, you can turn off all the danger settings and just have a good time. Or if you love creature collectors, then you'll have so much fun collecting all the different kinds of slimes. I think this might be the, no, that's lava dust. Lava dust. That's lava dust. Okay. I made a mistake coming here. I don't think they have what I want. Let's leave. And these guys are mean, you know, they're gonna they're gonna try to hurt me. They put a little warning sign up here to tell you, hey, danger, danger. It's a little more chill over here. Although there's little rock guys flying around everywhere. You know where there might be sand. So over back where those angler slimes were. So it's so fun to explore and find new kinds of slimes. And I'm still discovering new kinds of slimes because some have been added since the last time I played and some are new from the first game. I bet there's sand around here. I just gotta find it. Silky sand. Okay, so you only get two per spot. I was gonna talk about the update for those of you who play the game and you um, haven't played the update. So you may, um, you may know that we. Oh, I see some. It's over there.
there's a really gorgeous one that I found yesterday and it was like a water slime sanctuary and uh, I'll see if I can come across it again where was it on my map I want to say it was this uh, I'm gonna pop home and then I'll go look for it because I put a uh, I built a teleporter right here so that I can easily just pop home if I need to right here boop it's not that far from the actual teleporter but that teleporter would take you here and then you have to run all the way home this one takes me straight home let's go put my sandy silky sand sorry silky sand was oh, a new egg my silky sand and my rock floats up in the whatever this thing is called. This is where you store what you need to craft. So I can see what's in it. I've got some cotton plorts. Those are from the bunny slimes. I have some phosphor from the little phosphor slimes that only come out at night. Tabby plorts and other stuff. My PC just kicked on really loudly, I don't know why. So this is um this is where I get my upgrades. So what I had wanted to get was this extra tank. Um because I only can store four spots down here. And I love a fifth. That would be really, really useful. So I needed ten rock plorts and ten silky sand. And it's expensive. for next. I've never gotten one of these heart modules that gives you more health, but that would probably be useful. This one gives you more energy, which I really like, um, because I'm always running around like crazy. But this one, um, makes your sprinting more efficient. You use less energy when you run. But I don't even know what this is, so I cannot make that level of the jetpack, 20% less energy is pretty good. Again, I don't know what this is, I can't do that. This one, you can hold up to 40 things in it. I started out with just 20, 20 per item, and now I upgraded it to 30, and the next would be 40. Um, this is the thing I just got, of course. The water tank would allow you to keep water so that you can shoot it at the dollars when you see it. That'd be pretty easy to do, but I don't need it. I could get this one that just kind of goes boom, and then you can kind of push things away that might be about to harm you. And this one is interesting. It's more like a protection if you, like, because you can't really die in the game, but you can fall off the world, for example, or lose all your health. It's not going to be a bad game over situation, but you would lose some stuff. You'd lose all your stuff. However,
Let's get your fatty plorts. Okay, I'll leave the water slimes alone. They're fine. And I need to get a cotton. Let me go run out to the, the outside the farm, uh, the ranch, and do that. I'm going the wrong way. Uh, I think it's the 
this way, I came across a teleporter, a secret teleporter, to um, this area, so that I don't have to go here, but it's over here, it's this, that takes you there.
haven't seen that yet. I don't need you, thank you. It's a good thing I got that extra spot right, otherwise I would be full by now. Be full of spots and I wouldn't have anything left. So I'm here, I need to kind of hook a left head in that general direction. I, if it's where I remember it. And we're gonna keep our eye out. Oh, this is where the map was. You have to see how it's covered in clouds and all that. You've got to find... Oh, dear. That's interesting. Now we have to worry about lava. Lava. <laughs> about lightning. I see some more buzz wax here. I'm gonna grab it. See this? This is the uh, ringtail slime. Like, like I told you, they turn to you. stone at the beginning or at, at, during the day. If I went and took that into a cave, though, he would come alive. And I still had it in the right direction. Yeah, I think. I really don't see any primordial. Oh, I see the lava dust and a lot of it. Maybe I can check my resources, my little wiki. Why did I just... 
just get 50? Did you see that? Why did I just get 50, uh, they're called some, something bucks, I can't remember. Lightning Storm is not super relaxing. I mean, personally, I find a Lightning Storm quite cozy, but the music is not as cozy for that. Oh, it's very chill here. Yeah, I like that. That's my little teleporter spot. I love this music. Very nice. And let's deposit the stuff I got. I think we're gonna I'll maybe stick to Rainbow Island, which is this one. Rainbow Field. I, mean, I guess the whole place is Rainbow Island, but I feel like there's primordial oil here. I just haven't found it yet. Oh, out of interest. Were any of those unknown things? Was it the lightning thing I just picked up? One was buzz wax. But nothing says lightning mode. I'll put it in though. And the buzz wax. And there's my primordial oil. Just to clarify, I need seven more primordial oil.
thoughts are, you know, but I don't really want to do that. It's more fun to just kind of naturally stumble across stuff. What about over there? I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the difficult route. <laughs> I like to fly with my little jetpack. Oh, it is dangerous here. Bring more to oil, hello, please. Oh, look.
so slow. Okay, then I'm gonna... Wait, 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 don't, don't you eat it. No, don't eat it. Don't eat it. Oh my god. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, now let me see if I can feed this cotton honey lark out. So that I can get the blork back. Here, uh, eat a carrot. Oh, I already had a carrot on me. <laughs> I can't believe this. You ate my honey but No, that was not the one I wanted. This is funny. <laughs> okay. So you really have 
see them carrying around carrots and stuff. It's very cute. Their favorite food is the stony hen. The false fur slime. False fur slimes come out at night, flying about the moonlit range upon their translucent wings. False fur slimes have a luminescent slime core that pulses with a soft glow, making them easy to spot. It's for this reason ranchers sometimes refer to them as low stars. Are there any risks? False fur slimes have special needs compared to your typical slime. A false fur slime in its ports will quickly vanish if exposed to sunlight, meaning a rancher could quickly lose an entire corral's worth of false fur slimes if they're not careful. Ranchers must either vac them up before daybreak or keep false fur slimes in a place that is perpetually dark, like a cave. So I could keep them in my cave, but I don't have any. The favorite food is the cuberry. The angler slime. Angler slimes inhabit the deepest depths of the slime sea, but have now been discovered on Rainbow Island. It's not known what drew them from the darkest recesses of the far, far range to what very well could be the most vibrant, but it may have something to do with the taste of a plump, sun-kissed drumstick of a sea hen. That's their favorite food. Are there any risks? Yeah, beware. Behind the angler slime's adorable fishy exterior beats the heart of a chicken chomping monster. Oh, that sounds like my cat. Using their hypnotic, lantern-like lure, they create a powerful radiant flash that can stun chickens and even other slimes. <laughs> I don't know why my PC just suddenly chugs. Like, it's ridiculous. I'm just sitting on the screen. Rock slimes. Rock slimes earn their names from their rocky crown of sharp spikes atop their slimy bodies, but their affection for minerals doesn't end with their appearance. Rock slimes are strict vegetarians, favoring the satisfying crunch of the heartbeat most of all. That's the thing I'm growing. I was growing it for my rock slimes, and then my rock slimes escaped, and I had to shoot them all into the sea. <laughs> So, the risks, the dangers of a rock slime should be fairly obvious. Their rocky crown is sharp enough to pierce straight through a rancher's boots. But it's not all about watching where you're stepping, as these rocks are always rolling. When you see a rock slime revving up for a tumble, it's best to get out of the way. The batty slime. Batty slimes love to lurk in cold, dark places like caves, swooping down from ceilings to scare others with their glowing red eyes and pointy fangs. No, they're not vampires. The glowing eyes let them see in the dark, so they also greatly dislike garlic because they only eat fruit. Seriously, their favorite fruit is the pomegranate, which I'm growing. So while in darkness, like caves or at night, batty slimes grow hungrier and they'll eat more often than other slimes. And while they can survive in sunlight, the sun's searing rays freak them out a bit, increasing their agitation over time. Again, no, they're not vampires. I don't know what this one is yet. Here's the ringtail slime. Look at that cheeky little face. I love it. Ringtail slimes are nothing but trouble. Theft under cover of darkness is their favorite hobby, and they delight in getting away with as much as possible before the sun rises. The reason for this exclusively moonlit crime spree is that ringtails have a peculiar condition that transfers them, transforms them to stone when exposed to sunlight. And while we're not saying this is an ancient curse, they're definitely the type of slime who would have an ancient curse if that was a thing. So the danger here is that once a ringtail slime starts eating, it will never stop. Just one ringtail slime is capable of wiping out an entire farm if given the time. And they offer nothing in return because a ringtail slime stops producing plorts when it would otherwise be full. So if you plan on ranching these ravenous rascals, keep an eye out for a mischievous expression to know when to avoid feeding them. So I, I haven't farmed any for that reason. It makes me nervous. The boom slimes. Boom slimes are often heard before they're seen. The slime cells of a boom slime are constantly vibrating, causing their slime to increasingly crackle with energy before ultimately exploding. However, the boom slime always comes out unscathed. They're always a little dazed. Look at their funny expression. So the obvious risks, the boom slimes are constantly building toward an inevitable explosion, making them quite hazardous to ranchers. In addition to those explosions causing bodily harm, they also have the capacity to send all nearby slimes flying into the air, making them a hard slime to corral. And their favorite food is the briar hen. Here's the newest one I've picked up, the honey slime. Honey slimes are an odd breed of slime composed of a hyper-sweet slime compound. Most slime scientists believe this to be the result of their slime cells replicating. 
they are risky to manage, they just require a fair, fair bit of maintenance. A rancher needs a pool of fresh water, like a pond, available for a bottle of slime and its floors to sit in, as they will evaporate if away from water. Finally, bottle slimes are exceptionally shy, and they'll not produce blurts if they are in close proximity to more than three other slimes. Overall, a bottle slime is a better fit for a more experienced rancher, not one still wet behind the ears. That's why I only have four. The crystal slime, they're really pretty. Believed to be a cousin of the rock slime. Yeah, they look alike. The crystal slime is covered in a crown of shimmering crystal spikes. These spikes seem to form from the crystal slime generating a tremendous amount of internal heat and warping the minerals around them. A truly alien behavior. Are there risks? Yeah, the sharp crystals adorned on the crystal slime. Crystal slime's crown will cause a great deal of harm if touched. Worse still, the crystal slime routinely creates large patches of hazardous crystals in the environment around them. Thought to be a means of expelling internal heat, these crystal patches are ultra hot and can be shattered if splashed with water. Then there's the fire slime. They're a rare breed of slime that lives on ash. Fire slimes will eat just about any food, but not without it being burned into ash first. The only way to feed a fire slime is to use an incinerator with an ash trough upgrade, which is what I did. So they need ash to survive and they'll quickly snuff out if left on any other surface for too long. While keeping fire slimes in an ash trough, simply burn any food to produce some ash and fill the trough. A fire slime's naturally burning state makes them bad companions for other slimes, as their fiery touch will send a slime flying. Additionally, fire slimes and their plorts need to be kept in an ash trough under an incinerator, where they'll quickly snuff out. If you need to deal with fire slimes directly, a splash of fresh water will put out their fires for a short while. And then we have some special ones, like the Lucky, the Manekineka one. They're a strange variant. Slimes are a strange variant of tabby slimes that seem to have a fascination with shiny objects, particularly new book coins, that's what the currency's called. A lucky slime cobbles up any coin it can find, giving it a distinct jingling sound as they move about. However, coins don't make for a balanced diet, and a lucky slime will still greatly devour meat of any kind. In so doing, its body bursts with a shower of new bugs, having little room left in its slimy tummy. This burst often sends the lucky slime flying into the air. Once detecting a rancher, the lucky slime will soon make a hasty retreat. No known rancher has ever been skillful enough, or perhaps lucky enough, to capture one of these slippery slimes. Are there any risks? Lucky slimes pose the same risks to ranchers as other rare slimes, mainly accidents in their pursuit that can lead to a rancher's demise. Yeah, it was I think it was a lucky slime that I was chasing after when I fell off and I died. <laughs> the promise of a small fortune when encountering a lucky slime has led more than a few ranchers at first into the slime sea. Yep, I'm one of them. This occurrence has summoned the more superstitious ranchers to see the lucky slime as a bad omen. Or perhaps, like the universe testing their greed, these ranchers will ignore lucky slimes altogether, even purposefully showing them away. Well, until you hear those new bugs jingling, and then maybe just one shot couldn't hurt. Then there is the coal slime. The most elusive and sought after of all slime species is easily the gold slime. Very little is known about these slippery creatures as they have proven impossible to capture. Gold slimes are quick as a flash and will immediately begin to flee ranchers on sight. If a rancher is to profit from an encounter with a gold slime, they need to think quick. <laughs> yeah. So cold slimes produce no direct risks to a rancher, but their appearance often induces panic and leads to sometimes fatal mistakes. Further, the only way to obtain cold plorts is to strike a cold slime with any spare resources in your vac. Doing so can produce a cold plort, though it also leaves a trail of additional resources in the area, leading to unintended largos or worse. And this is the yolky slime, which is a new one. Yolky slimes are a strange and elusive type of slime, sometimes found near wild chickens on Rainbow Island. But unlike dabby slimes, their intent is not to hunt, for within their warm golden center lies an enduring love for chickens. Such is the power of this glowing affection that it sometimes inspires nearby hens to produce a rare delight, a giant egg full of chicks and yolky blurts. Yolky slimes can only inspire the production of giant eggs when nearby chickens are able to reproduce. They're not miracle workers, so if hens and roosters are too crowded, the giant eggs will be a rare occurrence indeed. Slime ranchers should also note that giant eggs will only produce yolky blorts when they are fresh, and the yolk inside is still glowing.